an American city still does not have clean water to drink. Recently, they did not even have the opportunity to flush their toilets because they had no water pressure. The reason, well, still kind of unknown. We have some idea what created the mess, but no absolute confirmation based on an exhaustive investigation into the private company who was charged with overseeing the water issue in Jackson, Mississippi. Let's put up a picture of the governor of Mississippi full mass. So let me give you some background to what's happening now. Water pressure has now been restored, whoop de doo They can now turn on their faucet and it will spew out water that can kill them. That's what's happening. At least they can flush their toilets. Here's another dynamic, governor, that you have not addressed. Let me say this directly to Governor Tate Reeves. Governor Reeves, the public school system in Jackson, they have AC units. Those AC units are powered by water. The schools have had to turn off their AC units because they are just now allowing students back in after the water pressure was restored. But they have had to turn off the air conditioned units and come up with alternative ways to keep children cool. Because if they don't, the children will be forced to breathe in, yep, toxic polluted air. Okay, Jackson, Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves and city government officials said today, the tanks are full, water pressure is solid. Reeves said during a Monday news conference, the governor said while there may be more bad days in the future, we have however reached a place where people in Jackson can trust that water will come out of the faucet. People in Jackson can trust the toilets can be flushed. The school system said on Twitter, water pressure was suitable for classes to resume at nearly all school sites. But once again, they cannot keep the children cool on hot days. There's more. While pressure has been restored, the water cannot be consumed. Jackson residents are still under a boil water advisory, the city said, in order to lift the advisory. City officials must get two rounds of clear samples from the water, a process the city hopes to begin midweek. Jackson home of about 150 plus thousand residents had been under a boil water advisory since July 30th due to a high level of manganese combined with the use of lime at the OB Curtis plant. That's the private company, that's in nearby Ridgeland. The main pumps at the water treatment plant were severely damaged around late July, forcing the facility to operate on smaller backup pumps. The governor did not elaborate on the damage, nor has the company. We still don't know all of the variables involved in this disaster. There's more, FEMA concerns with drinking water and the restoration. The head of the federal emergency agency known as FEMA said Sunday, It is still too soon to say when all Jackson residents will have safe running drinking water. The focus right now is making sure we can get bottled water out, FEMA Administrator Chris Well told CNN's Dana Bash. The city warned additional challenges as repairs are made may impact the improved water pressure. The FEMA director visited the site Friday and said it's not certain when the water plant will be fully operational again. Let's show a picture of the mayor. Okay, now remember I told you when I first reported on this story that the mayor uh, Lumumba, he's a progressive, he leads in front, he's willing to say what is necessary to be said. He said the governor not only chose to not invite him to the press conference about Jackson, Mississippi. The governor has never talked to him about the crisis in Jackson, Mississippi. So the mayor said, to ABC News, and I quote, as I have always warned, even when the pressure is restored, even when we're not under a boiled water notice, it's not a matter of if these systems will fail, but when these systems will fail. There are many points of failure. We're talking about a set of accumulated challenges 
that have taken place over the better part of 30 years. He's absolutely correct. I did the research here. Here's what else I found. There was a time, ladies and gentlemen, when the Republican controlled legislature of Mississippi, the Republican governors of Mississippi would actually give grants to Jackson, Mississippi, because of their need and the importance, the importance of that population to the state. They stopped. They stopped those grants. They stopped the flow of resources. They stopped the influx of money. Now, the governor, he wants you to believe he just found out about this maybe two weeks ago. As a matter of fact, in this press conference, he talks big and bold about, I was just briefed by my staff and here's what we're going to do. Well, damn it, governor, I have a clip of you, sir, talking about this in 2021. Which means, just as the mayor has indicated, this was something you were well aware of. So let's not play reactionary leadership here. You could have been a proactive leader and done the right thing by the community of Jackson. But Jackson is not your voting base, is it, governor? 85 to 90% African American, vast majority of individuals there vote Democrat. You get the picture. It was not your priority, but you saw it coming. You talked about it in 2021. So here's what we're doing. Uh, today during my morning radio show, I did a live remote outside of a church in Atlanta, Georgia called West Hunter Baptist Church. Here's some of the pictures from that. We are raising thousands, thousands of water bottles to send to Jackson. Mississippi. Last Sunday, I worked with colleges, the AU Center, Spelman, Morris Brown, Morehouse, Clark Atlanta University to send water to Jackson, Mississippi. For everyone who's watching this news segment, I encourage you to find an opportunity to send water to Jackson, Mississippi. Now, should this be happening? Of course not. Can we talk about the policy breakdowns? Can we wax poetic about what happened here? Of course we can. But our brothers and sisters, fellow American citizens are struggling right now to just drink water. Jackson, Mississippi, when your house is on fire, nobody needs an arson investigator. You need a person with a fire hose and we need your help. So I encourage you to connect to the people of Jackson and do what you can. All right, AB, thoughts here. Yeah, so first I wanna thank you, Dr. Ritchie, for using your your platform and your resources to help our American fellow citizens um, to help them get water. With that, I wanna address the governor first. His actions are not only negligent, um, unprofessional, and derelict of his duties, but they are dangerous for this population of people. Let's remember that we have children, Right, there are elderly people, there are the disabled that are being affected by this issue right now. And this is a 30 year issue, right? So these are things that leadership has known about for years and years and years and have chosen not to deal with. Let this be a reminder of how dangerous gerrymandering is and how important voter rights and voting is. Because you need to vote for leaders who are going to support you and do the right thing regardless of what their political ideology is. When you step into that leadership role as governor specifically, you are responsible for the people of your state. We are in America. Where we claim to be the best, best on earth, right? And yet you have a, a section of people, mostly black citizens, who are without running water to even flush their toilets. At a time when we have COVID still going on, we have monkeypox still happening, and Lord knows what else will, will come up in the next couple days, months, whatever. So I, my prayers go out to um, Jackson, Mississippi, and I hope that we can come together to support this community and let them know that as American citizens, we got you. Very well said, we're going to keep everyone updated on the progress of Jackson, Mississippi and give you the truth as it comes.